Hey guys, let's get more news about Lakers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Former Celtics star, Lakers celebrity fan talk hated and heated 80s rivalry. When it comes to rivalries in the NBA, there was nothing better than when the Boston Celtics and Los Angeles Lakers squared off in the 1980s. The teams genuinely disliked each other. Fights, hard fouls, and physical basketball were the norm. The NBA craved Celtics versus Lakers so much that it scheduled several preseason meetings between the two opposite coast teams because they only met twice during the regular season. In every year of the 1980s, either the Celtics or the Lakers reached the NBA Finals. They faced each other three times. The Lakers finished with five titles in the decade, while the Celtics captured three championships. Cedric Maxwell, a two-time Celtics champion in the decade, and rapper-slash-actor Ice Cube, a longtime Lakers fan, talked about the bitter rivalry and rehashed some of the glory days during his appearance on the Cedric Maxwell podcast. When the Celtics and Lakers met in the 1980s, it was must-see basketball. There was no mingling between opposing players before or after games. Former Lakers guard Byron Scott pulled no punches when describing the scene when the teams met on the court. The one thing everybody has to understand is it was a true rivalry, Scott said during his Off the Dribble podcast in 2022. It's not like today. You don't have the true rivalries in the NBA like you did back in those days. We didn't play ball with those guys in the summer. We didn't play high school ball with them, and we didn't play AAU ball with those guys. Those guys hated us. We hated them. The rivalry was real. It was legit. We couldn't stand each other. We tried to beat them up. They tried to beat us up. In the midst of all that, we were trying to win a series. Maxwell, who still works for the Celtics as a radio analyst, gets queasy when he goes to L.A. and runs into some of his former Lakers opponents. I'll tell you what, I don't think I've ever hated people, Maxwell said. Hate's a strong word, but when I saw Magic, Johnson, Coop, Michael Cooper, and, James, Worthy, I wanted to, expletive, throw up. Them dudes still piss me off right now. Ice Cube is a die-hard basketball fan and loves his Lakers. In 2017, he launched the Big Three, a three-on-three -three basketball league featuring former NBA players. Cooper, a guard on the Lakers teams of the 1980s who won five NBA title in L.A., is the coach of Three's company, one of the Big Three squads. Cube said Cooper was thinking about Boston while coaching his Big Three team. We got our championship game there Sunday, Ice Cube said on the podcast. Michael Cooper's coaching the championship game, and he's coming to me, saying stuff like, hey, man, this is in Boston, so we gotta win this. I'm like, Coop, you're not playing no more, man. You guys never quit. That's the beauty of it. We're like old soldiers, Maxwell said. We don't give it up. I have respect for him. I told somebody on the podcast earlier that I respect the hell out of Magic right now for what he's done as an entrepreneur, for what he's done for black people, HIV, all that. I absolutely respect him, but then the guy turned around and said, but how do you feel about him? I said I still hate his ass. Darvin Ham admits past mistake during Lakers tenure. The Darvin Ham era in Los Angeles is over, but the fallout is continuing. The Lakers parted ways with Ham this offseason after a first-round exit, replacing him with first-time head coach J.J. Redick. On paper, Ham wasn't unsuccessful. He took the Lakers to a conference finals and the first round, losing to a better Nuggets side on both occasions. The rosters around LeBron James and Anthony Davis have been less than ideal, making it hard for any coach to do a better job than Ham. That doesn't mean, however, that Ham didn't make any mistakes. In fact, former Laker Patrick Beverly just recounted a story where the 50-year-old coach did exactly that. According to Beverly, the former Lakers head coach approached him in Las Vegas and told him he was right. 
Pat Bev allegedly has been asking Ham to have more practices and not count on the talent alone. In Ham's defense, it is difficult to practice a lot in the NBA. The regular season is grueling and the teams are constantly traveling. There isn't much time to build continuity in practices, so teams use the regular season to do that. Beverly, a veteran known for his intensity, probably wanted more practices, but perhaps it wasn't feasible for the Lakers to do so. We will never know if practicing more would have helped. The Lakers had ill-fitting rosters that didn't have enough shooting or defense around LeBron and AD. That likely was a bigger problem than anything else. Ham joined Doc Rivers' coaching staff in Milwaukee this offseason. He had been the assistant coach there for four seasons before joining the Lakers in 2022. He will try to revive his career and land another head coaching gig soon. Report, Rich Paul influenced Lakers, Warriors trade talks involving LeBron James. At one point during the 2023-24 NBA season, the prospect of the Los Angeles Lakers trading superstar forward LeBron James to the Golden State Warriors seemed like something that could come to fruition before the NBA trade deadline in February. Although it seems unheard of that James would get traded during his Hall of Fame caliber career, the Lakers seemed to be going nowhere despite having him and fellow superstar Anthony Davis healthy and productive. The Warriors seemed to be in the same position as the once-dominant team in the Bay Area couldn't put it together, even though they added another future Hall of Famer to the roster in veteran point guard Chris Paul. Unfortunately for Golden State, James' agent, Rich Paul of Clutch Sports, did what he could to make sure the deal never came to fruition, as he believed it would be bad for his close friend and client in terms of legacy, according to NBA insider Mark Stein via Legion Hoops. As easily the most criticized superstar in the NBA today and perhaps ever, James and his representation have been extremely tactical in the moves made in the twilight of his career in the league, as the goal seems to be to go down as the best ever to do it in the NBA. Ironically enough, the Lakers made moves over the course of the summer that seemed to be directed by Paul and Clutch Sports, with the team hiring James' friend J.J. Redick as the team's new head coach and selecting his son Bronny James in the 2024 NBA draft. For years, LeBron James and Draymond Green have built the most bizarre bromance in the NBA. Outside of squaring up in the NBA Finals over and over and sharing the same agent, there was no logical reason for two players who had never been teammates or weren't even close in age to be that close. Also, the fact that Green often went out of his way to praise his opponent, even at Stephen Curry's expense, was odd and raised suspicion. Needless to say, he's never cared about that, not in the slightest. That's why it wasn't much of a surprise to see the two vibing together on vacation again, via Bleacher Report. Green is unapologetic and blunt, and he's never shied away from his love and admiration for James. He even convinced the Warriors' front office to try and make a run at him, although James wasn't interested in taking his talents to the Bay Area. Notably, that may have changed now that James got a glimpse of what it's like to play side-by-side -side with Stephen Curry in the Olympics. However, it seems significantly more feasible to see the Warriors trading Green to the Los Angeles Lakers than the Lakers trading James to the Warriors. Of course, this is all speculation, and that could be just another case of two buddies hanging out and making the most of their free time before getting back to work. Whatever the case, this will never not feel kind of weird for Warriors fans. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Rich Paul? Leave your opinion in the comments.